Let's get into it. This is one of my favorite rabbit holes to go down. Things like this. You go down these rabbit holes, it's usually by yourself. There's usually no one to validate these type of things. You know, are people clones? Are they not clones? And why do I bring that up? Well, Jim Brewer and Roseanne sat down together. And Jim Brewer brings up a story about Dave Chappelle that nobody has heard before. And he's talking about Dave Chappelle getting visited by some people before he took this long hiatus and disappeared from the public eye. So I'm going to be showing you that story. Then I'm going to show you something that correlates with what Dave's saying, or sorry, with what Jim's saying. And it's a uh, it's a four or five minute clip with Dave Chappelle and Oprah. OK, and then I'm going to show you some side by sides and we're going to we're going to go down this fun little rabbit hole. Coach Colin News, of course, you already knew that. Let's get into it. What happened between you two? Did you fall out? Of course I have it that fast. Why do I always have it that fast? Let's put it to normal speed. Let's back that up. Here we go, folks. What happened between you two? Did you fall out? Or did you just go different ways? No, no, no. We, we, I think different ways, but I'll put something out there that I don't know if he... We, he, he when we were, we, were filming, have, we were filming a movie, and he also had a lot of pressure yeah. uh, from HBO, and, uh, or, or not HBO, Comedy Central, Comedy and all this shit, right? Comedy Central, the worst bunch of people on earth. Horrid. Mm -hmm. He then, while he was on the show, when it was blowing up, uh, and we were, we remember the Aspen Comedy Festival? I don't know yeah, that was fun. I did that too. He came there and he was freaked out. Yeah. I said, what's, what's going on? And all I could say is he was visited. Yeah. That's oh, what shit. I think too. And when he told me who visited him, I still, I, my heart stops for a second. Oh, I'm like, get the fuck. And I'll never forget. He went, you believe me, right? You believe me, Jim, right? And I could, I could, he's like, they came to me hmm. and he said the names. I'm like, get the fuck. And what happened? And then all of a sudden he went to Africa. Yeah. That's what I remember happening. But they, they never really said what happened. Was he threatened? I mean, I don't know how much you want I, to I don't you have. Can't, you can't. I can, that's okay. none of my business. Okay. But I know for a fact. He was corrected. He said. Correct. Yeah. He was, hey, by whoever it was. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, I wanna... we need to have a conversation. Um, would you like some of your own coffee in your house? What? Yeah. Like that heavy shit. And that's the first time, you know, I would, I would, I would. It's, yeah. it, it, and so when I saw him come back, mm. um, it was a lot less communication. And maybe he just, you know, maybe he just grows, whatever. But I can honestly say, and maybe I'm crazy for, and I am crazy for saying this. Mm -hmm. When I saw him completely come back, I really questioned if that was him. Mm. Yeah, I know, right? I think that's mm -hmm. And I know that's really crazy. I think those same things, yeah. I know that's crazy. Uh, well, it's no crazier than that. Oh, the trains are going off the rails. <laughs> I tell you what, these fucking boats are running in the bridges. <laughs> Son of a bitch, the goddamn fucking electricity went out. And, you know, let me get the... You know what? The black box don't work. Son of a bitch, it's been working for years and years. And all of a sudden, this fucker went out of business. <laughs> Uh, so we don't know what happened. All we know is the fucking ship. Yeah. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Okay. Aliens in the mall. <laughs> Jim Brewer, man. But you know, notice, notice, that was funny what he was saying, but notice that topic change. Notice it went from very serious to let's just get into the hilarity. And here's the main thing with this whole thing. Roseanne has been on this kick, I don't know, for some years now. But like to a to a wild extent recently, recent years of saying whatever she thinks, saying it outright, saying it straight up. And then when it came to her son, because if you don't know that third person that's in the room with them, that's her son. He's her uh, podcast producer. When it came to that, answering that question that he asked, she said, we can't you can't. She wouldn't 
she wouldn't uh, say anything. She wouldn't say anything. And on top of not saying anything, she wouldn't allow Jim to say anything. And Jim also knew that he couldn't say anything towards that question. Very, very interesting because when do you know Roseanne to censor or like stop herself from saying something, you know? So I found that very interesting about this story. Jim Brewer, the fact that they bring up Comedy Central like the worst bunch of people, that was interesting. And then also, yeah, just Roseanne's reaction. And then on top of all that, she says, I think that too. I was thinking that too when he came back. That's 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 interesting. Very, very interesting. Now, again, this is a story that we've never heard before. Dave Chappelle's never come forward and talked about Jim Brewer in that way. This is the first time Jim Brewer's ever told this story. Since Chappelle's been back, Brewer has been on Joe Rogan's podcast, I want to say four times. He's never brought that up. I don't even think they've even spoke, spoke on Chappelle at all within the four episodes that he's been on. That's at least... That's at least 12 hours of talking, not to bring it up at all. But, of course, when you're with Roseanne, you feel like you can talk about certain things because she is very open-minded. But to see her reaction to that. Now, I pose the question to you before I move on to the next clip. Who do you think gave him a visit and corrected him? Now, when you hear corrected him, what does that mean? Well, as you're going to listen to this next clip, you're going to understand the correction that was being put forth. Dave Chappelle talks about some intentional stories being made up about him around from the people who were around him, the handlers, the assistants, the the behind the scenes of the Chappelle show, which he was working on at the time. So listen to this. That was the first tipping point. OK. And then they put in the paper that I had uh, pneumonia. God knows what. Mm hmm. It was walking pneumonia, because I was walking all over the place. <laughs> uh, I was relaxing. Uh, and then, uh, after that, I, I was coming back to the show, and uh, then they were like, well, Dave, you know, you should just back up the pneumonia story. And I was like, I'm, you know, that was your thing. I'm not, I'm not backing up a pneumonia story. And then the, the next day, it was in the paper that I had writer's block. Then I knew something was getting ready to get stressful because I hadn't even started writing. <clears throat> it wasn't, I was on the schedule to write. So I was like, what's, you know, what's going on? Are they going to... So these are your people trying to feed... Manipulate me. Sounds like somebody's trying to put young Dave in a compromising position. <laughs> uh -uh, uh -uh, Oprah. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> but, you know, okay, so then I got worse. So when I said I'm not going to do it, then all of a sudden it was like, well, now he has walking pneumonia. And then I knew long before I walked, I had considered walking. You had considered I had it. considered walking, because I went back to work, and the vitamin love was gone, because it was a real ugly negotiation. It's a situation where now everybody's taking credit for this and that and the other. It's all, it's just, it was getting ridiculous. And I knew I was going to leave, so I got ahead of schedule, and I bounced. And I didn't tell anybody where I was going. The whole time, they're trying to convince me I'm insane. They were trying to get me to take psychotic medication. Yeah. Like I'm sitting around, you know, I was stressed out, but the people that were telling me I was insane, I believed that they knew what was going on. So uh, this was troublesome. Yeah. I said, I'm not taking this medicine, man, because I know these people be trying to control you. Or, or maybe discredit you. I was afraid, like, you but know. But you were stressed out. That's there's why. There's no question. question. But it's very stressful for someone to constantly walk behind you and say, you're insane. Oh, hey, how about this? I showed up to work the first week, and they, where my office used to be, they built a wall there. Why? I didn't know why. But it came out later that they were like, well, they said you wanted it. I don't want to be walled up at the office. <laughs> I like hanging out and talking. OK. So you got up and you walked out, and nobody knew where you were going. Did your family know? Nah, well, no. Nah, I called my brother. Yeah. Me and my brother, real cool. I called him up and was like, uh, I'm going to Africa. He was like, cool, man. It's good. Did your wife and children know where you were going? No. No, nobody knew. No. I bounced. It, now, the, that the sounds a little crazy. It's not crazy because the situation 
kind of warranted it. Okay. Um, because certain people around me were putting my sanity in question, I would meet too much obstruction if I would say I'm doing something like yeah. this. Yeah, okay. So I figured, I, it wasn't that I didn't tell my wife, it was like, I'm not telling her till after I'm gone, which was a mistake, but it wasn't a crazy mistake. It's just a dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, As a know, husband, she should have known where you're gone. Is that what you're saying? She was gonna know. Okay. I, well, you know, I basically, I called my brother, I told, and I gave him a list. He called so and so and so and so and so and so. And I took off. Then I called my wife. Okay, why were you going to Africa specifically? One, I needed a break. You need a break. Two, we have family friends down there. And three, I just felt like uh, it was a place where I could really reflect. So, now when you take in Jim's story about him being really freaked out and then he disappears, being freaked out because he was visited, then he goes to Africa and everybody was under was wondering why on earth would he go to at like why like when I remember when it happened because I was the biggest consumer of the Chappelle show. I love that show. I watched that DVD until it didn't work anymore. I didn't even know that was possible. I wa whatever is on the DVD, I watched it till that came off. It was crazy. And when he left, I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? Nobody understood why he would go to Africa. And in the news, to what he was saying, it was just talking about him being crazy. That's it. That was the whole thing, is that he was nuts. Walked away from $50 million. Even in this show, as I'm showing this clip, they flashed on the bottom screen. Dave Chappelle walked away from $50 million. And he's in the process of explaining that he didn't just walk away, and there was things at play. So... When you go back to this whole thing, they're making up these weird stories. Now, if you think about pneumonia, could at times possibly, not all the time, you know, you know a lot of medicine, intervention, you know, he, and he had access, but at times that could be fatal. So they're making up a story about something that po could possibly become fatal. That's interesting. And then they're telling him to back up that story. He doesn't want to. He feels like they're trying to put him in a compromising position that kind of speaks to the whole being visited. Then talks about how he was about to walk and cost Comedy Central a whole lot of money. Then he just straight up runs away because let's let's face it. When somebody just bounces to Africa, I'm not telling my wife or my kids or anything. And only person I'm going to tell is my brother. That's you running away. I don't know. And then on top of that, he said they're trying to get him on meds interesting very very interesting and then going back to what brewer said you know when he came back not just came back from africa but came back from africa had this whole thing because you know this this clip is from when he got back from africa right so after that there was a long hiatus i think rogan has said like 10 years a 10 year hiatus where he was just gone and i remember it so clearly because I would constantly be searching for Dave Chappelle clips. He was the most inspirational figure in my life at the time because I needed laughter. I was very depressed and he was the funniest person in the world to me. So I would constantly look for new stand up because I was like, the show's done. I've watched the commentary. I've watched the special features. I've watched everything. You know, the DVD doesn't work anymore. I'm poor. I can't buy another one. <laughs> I have the number three. The number three is terrible. It's Donnell Rawlings and Charlie Murphy hosting it and everything. It's, it just didn't it didn't feel right to be watching it because he knew he didn't want it to be out. So I was constantly looking out for new stand up. And it was weird because he was doing these sets. He's Dave Chappelle. He's doing these sets where he's in the basement in London where you're like he's not even allowed to smoke. He's doing like these weird small sets, 20 minutes a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. He's running around like he's an open micer, but he's Dave Chappelle. And that it was almost as if he was not allowed to do stand up anymore. Now, let's put on let's put on our tinfoil speedos. I hope you brought the right size. Put it on with me, right? Both legs. Let's go. Put pull it right up. Okay? Either wasn't allowed to do stand up because he was visited. And they were like, "This is the deal." You don't get to do stand-up anymore unless you're going to roll with our plan. If you're not rolling with our plan, then you don't get to be in the public eye anymore. And that's that. Or 
let's get deep here. They're testing out the clone. <laughs> I, I know, it's crazy. Either that or they're testing out the clone. They're like, let's see if this clone can handle a 20 minute set. And it's like, oh, hey, Dave Chappelle, guys, light a cigarette. <laughs> but it, it was a very odd time because YouTube existed. I was searching him on YouTube. He was Dave Chappelle. He could have easily said, I don't need a manager. I don't need a tour guide. I, I don't need a agency, nothing. I can just do a stand up set like I've always done, make it a two hour special and say, hey, I'm back and take all the money for myself and do it independently like Cat Williams has been doing for years. Why didn't he do that? He just wasn't doing that. And the only time he came back is when he signed up with Netflix and then stepped back into that $50 million. Now, when everybody looks at that 50 million, they say redemption. He's walked away from it there, kept his integrity and then got it from Netflix. That's one way to see it. Another way to see it is you're going to take this 50 million and you're going to do what we say. I'm not going to do what you say. I don't want to do it. I'm walking away. Okay. All of a sudden now you're back. Well, here's the proposition again. We have another 50 million for you. Are you going to take it and do what we say this time or not? I'll take it. I want to do stand up. I want to be in the public eye. I want to be known as the greatest comedian ever. So I'll step into it. I'll do it. I don't know. And then on top of that, I mean, I've been going deep into stuff like this for so long. There was, <laughs> let's go deep. There is this Masonic stance that you have to do with one leg and one pant leg up. And throughout one of his first sets coming back, he was in that stance the entire set. Usually Dave Chappelle walks around. He was just in that stance the whole time. And a lot of people, you know, were like, why is he in this stance? And everybody drew their conclusions and they were like, oh, he's he's controlled this, that. All alleged, all hearsay, all just fun stuff to talk about and look into. But yeah, it's very, very interesting. And then just for Jim Brewer to say that, right? Like this is Chappelle now. This is him before. But listen here, when it comes to this whole thing, you're seeing years of a difference. Like, go look at a picture of me when I was 20. You're going to be like, oh, you're a clone? Like, is that what you're going to come up with? It's like, no, I used to have no, no, <laughs> no responsibilities. I was poor. I couldn't eat a lot. And I would work out for three hours a day. I'm not a clone. I just, I'm a, I'm a husband and a father now. And I get, my, my wife makes me all my meals. And if I tell her I want extra this or pizza that she'll just get it for me doesn't mean i'm a clone years go by you get bigger your skin loses elasticity all these things happen you know so i don't know i don't know but then when you hear that story from brewer you're like ooh, and roseanne to go along with it but that's roseanne she's 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 a wild card but it really did make me think same thing with kanye a lot of people uh, brought up Kanye as well when it came to that whole thing, because Kanye actually did say, if I disappear and then I come back, it's not me. That's what Kanye said. He also said, if I disappear for a while, you guys know why. And then he came back looking like this. But again, age, right? Like you can age and look different. You can be super stressed out and age and look different, right? I don't know. Like, you know, here he's with Kim Kardashian. Maybe he's taking Botox. You know, maybe maybe that's a prerequisite to be a, involved in the Kardashian family. You got to take Botox somewhere. He just went with his forehead <laughs> here. He's a free man. So he's just like, let these little wrinkles fly. Who knows? <laughs> right. Dave Chappelle, you shaved the mustache. I mean, uh, who knows? It's just a very, very interesting thing for Jim Brewer to bring up. And I know he didn't get any clearance from Chappelle to say that type of thing, because like he said, there's been less communication between them since Dave Chappelle came back. Who knows, man? Let me know in the comments with you. And you know what? I'll also touch on this. You know, I, I'm i making fun of the whole theory of him not being him. But also in the 90s, for anybody who's old enough to know, they cloned a sheep or a goat or something. They cloned it, a whole one. It was a big one. It wasn't like a little thing. That they're like, oh, we tried. No, no, it was like a full one. It was eating grass. And they're like, this is a clone. My friend right now, he actually has the ability to clone his cat. That's a real thing. He can go to a place and get his cat cloned. 
And when the cat passes away, he can have another one and it will be the same cat. That's a real thing that can happen. I don't know. It's it's definitely not in the country. I'm pretty sure it's you got to go to China to get that kind of thing done. But they allow it. To think that in this many years, I mean, think about what a cell phone looked like in 1994. They cloned a sheep in 1994. Think of what a cell phone is today. What would a clone look like today? I don't know. Could they do it to people? Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? I've never seen one, I think. I don't know. <laughs> but either way, let me know what you think of this whole thing. Let me know what you think about what Brewer had to say, what you, what you think Jim had to say. Let, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you had thought, thought about what Dave had to say. Let me know what you think about the differences. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, I'm out.